Hi, welcome to this edition of 10 in 10. This is the show where we look at 10 education technology topics in 10 minutes, very short period of time. And um, so you only have to give up 10 minutes of your time to learn 10 things. And today our topic is 10 ways to match education technology to the multiple intelligences. And I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Thomas Hoare and Walter McKenzie, who were uh, presented this uh, presentation or something very similar to it at the ASCD Whole Child Conference. This is another example of what you can find online. This is the type of information you can find online. There's tons and tons and tons of good, good information out there for our teachers to learn. And so how, shout out to McKenzie and Hoare for their whole child conference presentation. So let's go ahead and look at the, uh, uh, just to remind everybody what those uh, nine uh, multiple intelligences are from Gardner. They're verbal, linguistic, logical, mathematical, visual, spatial, musical, rhythmic, kinesthetic, naturalistic, intrapersonal, interpersonal, and existential. Wow, when I started there was only seven, now there's nine, go figure. Okay, so let's talk about the first one. Students that are verbal linguistic. Now I'm gonna kinda of assume that you probably have already done some kind of in-service or professional development on the different kinds of multiple intelligences. So I won't go into what each one is. I'm just gonna match up the, the product. So a student that's verbal linguistic, the type of instructional technology that you would use for that student would be something like a word processor. Word processing, very good with students like that. Um, uh, desktop publishing, those are the kind of programs that students are, are uh, that are verbal and linguistic would uh, respond well to. So verbal linguistic students, if you're having them do something, have them do it on a, uh, uh, a word processor. So that's the first one. Our second one is logical, mathematical. Those are students that respond well to uh, data, numbers, things like that, and of course, it's obvious, a uh, spreadsheet is the kind of thing that uh, students would be uh, uh, very uh, drawn to. They'd use a spreadsheet to create different kinds of reports, uh, different kinds, of they, they would use math to do their presentations instead of just words to do their presentations. So logical mathematical students in Howard's, uh, Howard Gardner's Multiple Intelligences respond well to products like uh, spreadsheets. Next one, the students that are visual spatial learners, they would respond to uh, a type of ed tech where they are actually creating something that's visual. And uh, this is an example of videos. Uh, the, uh, the students are creating video or some kind of uh, slideshows uh, with photos, things like that. Our visual spatial students would respond very well to uh, that, kind of, uh, that kind of product. The example I have there I have there is uh, iMovie, but there's lots of different kinds of uh, video uh, products that are out there. Doesn't have to be iMovie. Students that are musical and rhythmic, uh, that are in that those um, that particular uh, uh, multiple intelligence, they would respond to something where they're actually creating music or they're recording things. And so a product like GarageBand or a product where students can actually create music would be a great uh, ed tech. Uh, match for those type of students. So um, uh, GarageBand is a good one, but there's lots of different ones that are out there. Almost every kind of device has its own uh, a product that goes with it. And there's even online, uh, there's online uh, versions where students can create music online. So don't have to have these specific uh, types of, uh, these specific programs, just these types of programs. That's what we're talking about here. Kinesthetic learners are learners that learn by moving. So the students that are dancers, the students that are movers, the students that are athletic uh, in, their, in their nature. So what kind of technology would match those kinds of students? Video games work very well with these kind of students. For instance, uh, this is a, a, a Wii, a, a Nintendo Wii, where the students are up and dancing and they're learning by matching their body movements to what's going on on the screen, so uh, video games work very well with the kinesthetic learners. In, uh, and, and there's more and more and more video games that are coming out that are education related. And so you need, to, you need to do a little research and find out because there's video games online, there's video games that you can download, there's video games in um, like this, so it's actual video game itself. So there's all different kinds that our kinesthetic learners would match up well with. Okay. Naturalistic. 
Now what that means uh, are those students that like to get out, they like to get into nature, they, they're, they like to be in the environment. And so the picture that I have here is a picture of students that are out geocaching. And for those of you not familiar with what geocaching is, it's where there's something hidden in the environment and they have to use GPS and they have to use mapping tools to find those things that are hidden out in the environment. And so mapping tools, uh, geocaching tools, things like that are great for naturalistic learners. Okay. Intrapersonal learners, these are students that are self-reflective type of learners. And the types of programs that would work very well with those are journals where students are writing their own journals and uh, keeping a daily journal or keeping a journal they're experiencing in class. That's the type of, of ed tech program that would work well with our interpersonal learners. So there's even online journals that students can uh, do like in Evernote and things like that. Interpersonal are our students that like to interact with the crowd. They like to be uh, with other students. And so uh, an example here is video conferencing. This is a Google Hangout where students are actually uh, working with students in another classroom. They're, they're sharing what they're doing. One class is sharing with another class. Google Hangouts is a great uh, example of how you can uh, uh, have one class sharing with another. Skype is another way. Video conferencing. There's lots of different tools that are available. But those interpersonal students would really like to use programs like this to reach out to other students, not just the ones that are in their class, but beyond their class, beyond that, uh, beyond that four walls that we put our students in each day. Our existential learners are students that uh, have a, looking for the deeper meaning in things. These are students that are looking for uh, ways to uh, not hurt things, like uh, uh, they want to, uh, well, it's, it's the, it's the students that are looking for deeper meaning in things. And uh, uh, one of the things that are very good for these type of students is, again, video conferencing. Video conferencing and simulations. Simulations are very good with these students. So, for instance, these students may not want to do an actual frog dissection with an actual frog. But an online simulation of a frog dissection works very well with these students where you're teaching the exact same thing. You're just, um, you're just using a different... Uh, uh, technology to do it. So those, those are the types of things. Video conferencing and simulations work well with our existential learners. So there's only nine of the, uh, <laughs> there's only nine multiple intelligences and so we're doing our 10 in 10. So this is the 10th one here is equipment. What type of equipment do you need to do these multiple intelligences ed tech connections? What you need to look for are the types of equipment that can do as many of these as possible. Is it a, a pad or a tablet kind of thing? Is it a laptop? Is it a smartphone? Right now, the way uh, lots of technology are coming out, a lot of these devices can do many, many of these multiple intelligences. And you know and I know from our multiple intelligence training that most students aren't just one type of multiple intelligence. They actually mix those up. So they can be interpersonal and they can be kinesthetic or they can be logical and they can be interpersonal. So, you know, that, that kind of thing. That, so look for ways to connect the student to the technology. Uh, and a lot of these multiply one over. Can you do a word processing, for instance, in more than one thing? Word processing would work to keep a daily journal. It would also work for our um, our, uh, uh, typer, <laughs> our, our students that like word processing types, our linguistic students. Okay, so let's look at our, our things again. So verbal linguistic students, set them up with word processors. Our logical mathematical students, spreadsheets, visual spatial learners, digital video, musical rhythmic learners, some kind of music creation tool. Our kinesthetic learners, get them on video games. Our naturalistic learners, get them on geocaching and mapping tools. Our intrapersonal learners, get them on electronic journals. Our interpersonal learners, get them on video conferencing. And our existential learners, try those virtual field trips or those simulations and see how they do. That's 10 ways to match technology to multiple intelligences. Thanks for joining me this time. We made it easily within our 10 minutes. And we'll see you next time on 10 in 10.